Hello, and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Coming up a little bit later in the show, we'll hear a musical performance from the Benson Family Singers. But first, joining me now is the mayor of Dilworth, Chad Olson. Chad, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thank you for having me today. It's quite the honor to be here with you, so Good. thank you. Good. Well, Mayor, as we do always, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and your background. Well, uh, born and bred in Dilworth. Uh, lived there the majority of my life. Uh, uh, with that, I have a uh, wife, Molly, and two fantastic children, Chase and Charlie, both growing up in the great city of Dilworth. Uh, I'm fortunate. I teach at Moorhead High School. It's my full-time job. And uh, I'm a member of the Minnesota Army National Guard, where I've served almost 22 years now, to be 22 years in August. Uh, I run my own small business in the summer. And as you know, I'm here because I am the mayor of the great city of Dilworth. Well, we are here to talk about uh, your, your role there, but we thank you for your service in the Guard. As always, we appreciate our veterans. Uh, tell us about how you became mayor and what got you involved in sort of politics and government. Well, you know, that's, it's, it's a story that actually takes me all the way back in, into high school. Um, growing up with my grandfather, he was our city maintenance engineer. So he attended all the council meetings and he brought back the packets and, he, and I would read the information and take a look at, you know, what was going on in the city. And as I went through high school, uh, my high school government teacher was Representative Paul Marquardt. And his passion for government and the subject matter really spilled over in, and it was contagious. And I actually went to Morehead State University, MSUM now, and uh, I have a degree in political science. Uh, I, I, I love the component of, I love the component of government where you look to solve problems. And all honesty, um, I was on a training mission in Croatia when an opening uh, on the Dillard City Council uh, became available. I was visiting on the phone with my wife and she said, hey, are you interested in doing this still? And I said, yes, there was a, it was an open vacancy. We had a council member um, come, they, they, re, they I, I guess they said they, they stepped down prior to the election um, mm -hmm. to take on other ventures. And she called and said, hey, are you, you know, we were talking, she said, hey, are you interested in doing this? And I'm like, when's the deadline for the mm -hmm. application? And she's like, I think it's in uh, five days. And I'm like, well, you're still my power of attorney. Go fill out the paperwork, get all that stuff done, and sign me up, and let's see where this rolls. And here we are, you know, now 15 years later or so, and um, I went from council member. Uh, I was appointed under the council through that vacancy process. I ran for re-election, uh, earned, earned my seat that way for on the council. And 10 years ago now, I... I put my hat in the ring to become the mayor in Dilworth, and I was fortunate to, to garner enough support to where I get to represent the city of Dilworth. All right, well, with that said, uh, 10 years almost you've been mayor. Yeah. So how has it been now going from a citizen to councilman to mayor? Enlightening. I mean, you, you never truly understand the complexities uh, of, of getting things done. And, you know, from, from day one, I've been fortunate to have great support, you know, looking back at, at past mayors who have been a wealth of information, a wealth of knowledge to make sure that when I have questions, I have a resource. Our, our city administrators, past and present, you know, very supportive in terms of making sure I have the information and making sure that I have the ability to grow into the position and then allow, you know, allow me to be successful, but more importantly, really allow the city of Dilworth to be successful. So it, like I said, it was, it's been enlightening and every day is a new challenge and every day we learn something new and, and we grow in that capacity. Okay, well let's find out more about Dilworth. What type of city government does Dilworth have? Well, we have what's considered a, a weak mayoral system. So ultimately what that, it doesn't mean that the mayor's weak. I just wanna put that out there. But what it means is my vote is one of five. Uh, we have the mayor and we have four council members and we serve jointly and you know when, when we vote it takes you know usually the majority three out of five to, to pass any type of resolution or um, city ordinance so that that's the system that we operate under. Mm -hmm. Now how many people live in Dilworth? Uh, the current sign out front based on the previous census is 4,024. Uh, the demographer's estimate puts us about 44 or 4,500 plus or minus. So we're looking forward to what's going to happen with the census to see where we're at to gauge, you know, the continued growth to see how, um, how much we have grown in the last 10 years. Yeah. Now, in, in this area, I guess, with, with Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo, and Dilworth, 
uh, sort of a, a metro area, if you want to put it that way. How does that benefit a town and city like Dilworth? You know, it's one of the things that, that I was able and fortunate enough to recognize early on. You know, as as the metro community, you know, Fargo Moore, West Fargo, and Dilworth, there are so many things that we do together that complements the greater community. Uh, benefits to Dilworth um, of this location, when we just think of regional employment, and someone will correct me if my numbers are wrong, but I think like 60 or 70 percent, not only of the people in Dilworth, but of Clay County, actually go into North Dakota for employment. And, and that's, a, that's a substantial benefit, and that's, that's fantastic. Um, when we look you know, closer to home in terms of what the city of Dilworth wants to do and how we're able to maximize the relationships, you know, looking at the city of Moorhead specifically, we work um, together on water and sewer. Right? We have an agreement where we purchase our water we pur and then um, have a wastewater agreement with the city of Moorhead. And what that allows us to do in the city of Dilworth is maintain reasonable utility rates. I mean, we don't often think about that, but the fact that we can you know, collaborate and cooperate, we can provide you know, a, a substantial savings across the board when it comes to those issues. As we look into 2019, and Dilworth is going to, you know, we put out requests for proposals for our curbside recycling. I'm optimistic that the city of Moorhead is going to put in a proposal so we can continue and build on that relationship that's already provided and, you know, again, be very judicious of the, of the tax dollars that we're entrusted with to make sure that we provide a quality service, a new service in the city of Dilworth, and we're able to, to maximize the investment from, you know, the taxpayers. Sure, it sounds sounds uh, sounds logical there, but what what kinds of things maybe are you watching with the Minnesota legislature and, and how it might affect Dilworth? You know, one of you know there there are many issues, and we try to um, make sure that we we pay equal attention to them. And and the ones that always come up are like our border cities tax credits, which one um, allows for property tax reduction for businesses. And, and that's that's fantastic. That that allows for equalization between Minnesota and North Dakota property taxes for business. We look at um, our LGI, our local government aid. Uh, Minnesota has the philosophy of trying to ensure high quality services across the state, um, regardless of the population of the city. And this LGA really does a lot of good for cities the size of Dilworth in terms of being able to provide police, fire quality city staff and as that you know those those rates have been stagnant since 2002 and right now there's a push to bring those rates back up and that would allow one tax relief for the citizens in the city of Dilworth that'd be fantastic and it would allow us some opportunities as our city is growing to meet the, those you know increasing demands as well and then there's a third one and it's a, a little less well known but um, if if an employee is hurt on the job and has insurance for the rest of their life through the city of Dilworth, there's, there's um, legislation being proposed right now that rather than having the city continue to pay this if there is continued employment by the individual, that the individual be able to have insurance from their new employer or that insurance um, compensated through the state. And as that gets itself worked out, I mean, that could be, that's very substantial when you look at the in the constantly increasing price of, of insurance. So there's a few things, and there are many more. Um, but we're always we're always fortunate. We have a great relationship with our representatives and our senators. Um, so as we see needs and we feel needs, we we have a very responsive legislature to what's happening in the city of Dilworth. How, if any, is Dilworth affected by the diversion? You know, with its current alignment, um, the the thing that it's going to do for the city of Dilworth is our employees will, it's going to protect their, their place of employment in Fargo. Um, w without that protection to industry in, in Fargo and in North Dakota, um, we, we want to make sure that our residents are able to get to work. Uh, as it, when it first came up, they were going to run the diversion right, right through the city of Dilworth. And it's interesting because if you, if you go back 10 years, the alignment for the diversion would ultimately be running through our latest residential and commercial development. So if things had played out with the initial proposal, our growth area, both residentially and commercially, would have been sacrificed. So um, the diversion now is, especially a, a metro area um, concern, it is a, it is a great benefit for 
people who live, work, and play in our region. So, you know, we're optimistic on the state level that things are going to continue to get done. I know the governor, um, Waltz, was able to to make sure that it continues forward. So, you know, my hat's off to the to the diversion authority for continuing to see this forward because it is it is a, a gigantic undertaking and they're doing a fantastic job getting it to completion. Mm -hmm. So what is housing like in Dilworth as, as far as prices or availability? You know there there is a high demand um, at, you know for housing in Dilworth. We have people the recent demand or the, recent, the, the most frequent question we're seeing in the, Dil in the Dilworth community is calls the City Hall regarding um, not necessarily a retirement community but a community where 55 and older they can come in they can have you know a one level home high quality home where there's no maintenance you know no snow to shovel as we're all still probably shoveling tonight no, no lawn maintenance so we're seeing that demand being asked so I'm, I'm optimistic that we might see some of that in the future in terms of, of pricing and quality and affordability I mean we are we are right there with the metro area uh, I you know again looking at our last census data Dilworth had the highest median home value of any of our of any of our communities. So when when you talk about the quality of homes, you talk about um, the location of the city of Dilworth. I mean, we are we are a viable option for any homeowner in the area or home buyer in the area. Mm -hmm. Well, everything you said is Dilworth somewhat of a, a bedroom community. Would you say? Yeah, I I think so. And one of the things that we're trying to push is is greater commercial development, greater employment opportunities. I mean, we're always open. And we're always looking at at new ventures that come into Dilworth, um, but you know we have we have Burlington Northern Santa Fe. They're they're uh, they're a fantastic partner. They just um, updated their terminal facility in, in Dilworth, and so we have that facility. And we have a lot you know commercial in terms of you know Walmart, and we have um, you look at our strip mall, and you look at Aldi. I mean we have those. Uh, amenities and those employment opportunities and of course we're like I said we're always looking to do to make that next step to bring in you know the large-scale employer like we did with access access clinicals is another great example I mean they, they've hired everybody from PhD level we're talking doctors and scientists you know all the way down to I mean it, it actually employs you know the college kids you know that take part in their studies so um, I, I think that's uh, an often uh, well-kept secret about the city of Dilworth we have a fantastic city staff that will work to find solutions, you know, to get a business to come to Dilworth. We were able to do that with the TAC music venue. They had a laundry list of questions. They wanted to open up a place for bands to play and have events. And, you know, speaking with the owners, they said, you know, one of the things that brought them to Dilworth was the fact that city staff, you know, was so easy to work with and, and so so willing to, to do the legwork. And, and I think, you know, that that's a hallmark of what we do in the city of Dilworth. We welcome people to the city of Dilworth. Well, now, again, you're mentioning some of those businesses. Uh, yeah, what are those key businesses in Dilworth? Oh, I mean, like I said, you know, when we talk about the major commercial, we have Walmart, we have Aldi, we've, we've got restaurants galore. Um, and then, like I said, the TAC music venue is our, our latest addition with, and that's just what it is. It's essentially a concert hall um, along Highway 10. And we have Serenity Assisted Living. Um, and then we have a new assisted living coming on the east side of town where our new commercial development is. So, I mean, we're constantly growing that tax base. We're constantly growing those amenities, and we're constantly growing, you know, Dilworth. And like I said, it, it's an important part of who we are. But, but I, I just wondered when I was talking about that, do people realize they're in Dilworth sometimes when they're going to Walmart? <laughs> you know, so, and that's, that's the great thing. I mean, you know, politically we understand that the, or is it, Geopolitically, we know that the, that Highway 34, you know, east side is Dilworth, west side is Moorhead. But if if you drive from Dilworth, and when our sign says "Well, welcome to Dilworth," and you drive along Highway 10, you can go from Dilworth, you can go to Moorhead, you can go to Fargo, you get to West Fargo. And in all honesty, if you don't look for the sign that says "Welcome to Dilworth," it, it's hard to distinguish between where one begins and one ends. And that's a, that's a commitment one to the quality of all of our communities, right? And, a, and, a, and, and it's a testament to the, the collaboration that we all have together. Yeah. Can you talk, you mentioned a, a little bit about your police department and, uh, and other city services just a little more? A absolutely. You know, our department is growing. Uh, in terms of our police department, you know, we, we take a look at, you know, the, the city, the um, services provided. Uh, we were able to, you know, honestly, we'll give a, a shout out to officer or, or investigator Hunter Rossin, our officer of the year. And, and really one of the key components with our police department is, is the, the community interaction. 
are, are they are getting our officers out to be a part of the community, whether it's stopping in at, at the middle school and checking out the basketball game, or whether it's you know stopping at Summer Rec and, and handing out the the, pla the stickers that you know deal with police department, all the way up to you know cops have you know a, a very important job to do. They keep us safe every day and every night, and we we do all that we can to ensure they're trained and, and that you know they're ready to make sure that they are ensuring that our, our citizens are safe. Um, I can go on about our, you know, going through our street department, man, they're working overtime right now, as is everyone. But uh, one of the beautiful things about Dilworth is when you look at, you know, our ratio, you know, to streets, to equipment, you know, we're about one piece of equipment to every 10, maybe 12 miles of equipment. We can get the snow moved within a day so everyone can get to and from their home to their place of employment. And they take great, great care of, of all the things in the city. You know, when, when we're talking about water, we're talking about sewer, the reason it functions, the reason it works day in and day out is because our, our maintenance crew um, works tirelessly. We have a fantastic volu or volunteer fire department, top notch, second to absolutely none. And, and they do a fantastic job not only keeping us safe, but they're engaged in the community as well. And, and, and that's a, an ongoing theme. And in, in our city hall, our city staff, again, I can't sing their praises enough because day in and day out, if I have a question or I have a concern or I have, there's things that I just don't know, I can count on them anytime, any day to get me the information we need to know. So, you know, the, the true strength of the city of Dilworth is in, one, the employees. Right, I mean, they, they make the city you know, truly great. And then the, the other part of that is our residents. Uh, our residents are the strength, that whether it's community service or whether it's um, volunteering at the school or whatever the case may be. You know, it, it's not only the departments, but it's the people and the interaction between, the both, between them both. And, and through that, you see the strength of the city of Dilworth. Well, Mayor, uh, the mayor is a part-time job in Dilworth. How, how much time do you spend on the job? You know, I'll, I'll be honest, um, it all depends. You know, when things are, are moving at a quick pace, there's, you know, greater increase and greater demands. Um, you know, so, sometimes there's, there's an opportunity to take a step back and breathe, you know, an opportunity to take a step back and then partake in some other, uh, you know. <laughs> sometimes I, 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 uh, I have to serve our nation as well. And my hat's off to Peyton Mastera, our city administrator, who's really been... He's really been fantastic with ensuring that my efforts as the mayor in this, this part-time job are really focused on what we're doing, what needs to be done, and, and maximizing our time that way. Sure. 22nd uh, elevator speech, what are your goals for the future for Dilworth? You know, continued responsible growth. You know, we put in 120 new homes in 2019. We, we have lots that are already being sold and houses that were being built, you know, as, as soon as that development was done. Uh, we opened up a new commercial development along that line, um, or right south of that development. We have people moving in. We have businesses moving in. Continued responsible growth going forward will be the key to Dilworth success moving forward in 2019 and beyond. Okay. Well, if people want more information about Dilworth, where's the best place for them to go? You know, there's no better communication than personal communication. You know, contact City Hall, contact me, and then, of course, you know, in the, the age of the website, you know, just look up City of Dilworth, and, and we'll be right there answering all the questions that they may have. Okay. Well, Mayor, thanks for joining us today. Again, thank you for having me. Right. I appreciate it. Yes, Stay tuned for more. The Benson Family Band from Fairbow, Minnesota is a true testament to the unity that music can provide when enjoyed with loved ones. Their passion for performing gospel music is apparent in each of them, but it's the respect they have for each other that makes this family a group of professional musicians. Low down the chariot, let me ride. Why don't you low down the chariot, let me ride. Hey, Lord, you low down the chariot, let me ride. Low down the chariot, let me ride. Low down the chariot, let me ride. Why don't you low down the chariot, let me ride. Low down the chariot, let me ride. Low down the chariot, let me ride. Ride on, ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, ride on, King Jesus. You ride on, ride on, the conquering King. I want to go to heaven in the morning. Ride on, ride on. The 
conquering king. I wanna go to heaven in the morning. I've been trying so hard to make it out through. You know, I'm trying to live the way you want me to. I wanna say goodbye to all the things inside. But don't wanna miss that great glory ride. So when you break out through that golden sky, please slow. Down, no pass me by. Swing that chariot way down low. I wanna go, go, go. Right on, right on, King Jesus. Right on, right on, King Jesus. Right on, right on, the conquering King. I wanna go to heaven in the morning. Right on, right on, King Jesus. The conquering king, I want to go to heaven in the morning. Oh, low down the chariot. Let me ride. 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 Oh, low down the chariot. Let me ride. Chariot, let me ride low down the chariot. Let me
Well, that's all we have on Prairie Pulse for this week. And as always, thanks for watching. Funding for Minnesota Legacy Programs are provided by a grant from the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public.